So I'm going to share with you five tips that I have that I think um, make good partnerships and proposals. Feel free to jump in at any time during during my conversation with you and ask any questions. It can be as interactive, interactive and dynamic as you'd like. So my first tip is to write a partnership proposal and not a transactional sponsorship proposal. <clears throat> More and more corporations are looking for opportunities to create meaningful and relative relationships and partnerships. And what I mean by when I say meaningful is to have a, have a relationship that goes beyond the relationship between the two partners but actually reaches out to the relationship of the stakeholders and provides them with something that is rich and benefit and relevant to them. In the, case of the t in the case of TELUS, we are currently on a, a strategy that we call customer first. So this is a long journey that we've been on since 2010. And in order to succeed in this journey, we really try and formulate strong partnerships. Because in formulating strong partnerships, we, we find that we're able to cre create unique and valuable experiences for the people who are consuming the sponsored events or art or what have you. Um, Although it's important to follow the guidelines for application, so for example at TELUS and I know in, in many other websites, you'll find an application process where you can go through the online process and your application gets spit into a system that automatically rates you, grades you, puts you into the yes or no pile and um, it is important to actually go through and follow that procedure. However, I would recommend going beyond that procedure. For the partnerships and the um, sponsorships that I've been involved in you have to be a part of, of that system so that we have your information and we can track you but it's important to reach out in a unique and dynamic way especially through relationships now if you don't personally have a relationship with somebody at an organization uh, that you are trying to reach out to to approach um, and you're not comfortable formulating those relationships. I've, I've seen people use other individuals to help them with that. So if it's somebody on your board or if it's one of your stakeholders that is excellent at formulating relationships and breaking through that barrier, don't be afraid to ask for support and, and gain that support in building those relationships because the relationships are key to the beginning of the sponsorship proposal and partnership courting. One of the last points on the sheet that I wanted to talk about here was transactional sponsorships and what I mean by that and why I think that it's important to go beyond transactional sponsorships. So traditionally we've seen sponsorships um, work in a way where a sponsor pays a sponsorship fee, a rights fee, and in return they get a logo uh, on, on the sponsorship. This isn't really working in today's society with the consumers that we're looking at. The consumers are expecting more entertainment and more rich experience. And as a sponsor, we're expected to provide them with that experience. We're expected to be able to put on amazing activations and, and really do some experiential marketing with our sponsors. So as a partner who is, or as an artist who is approaching a, part, a sponsorship, it's important to have in the back of your mind what those potentials can be in terms of um, activations and experiential marketing and understanding that you're going to eventually go beyond the sponsorship and into a relationship that is a true partnership. Is there any questions on that? No? Yes, so the transactional sponsorship. Yeah, so for example, um, we, um, trying to think of one that I've done recently. I worked at Blue Mountain a number of years ago and Coors Light was one of my, um, sorry, Pepsi was one of my sponsors, for example. And the relationship wasn't as dynamic as I wanted it to be. They really just wanted to have their logo on the hill and pay the fee. And I felt like that wasn't the best experience for the people at the resort. So this is kind of a backward situation where usually it's often the sponsor that just wants to give their logo, etc. It's a lot of work to create a sponsorship that is more dynamic, that isn't just a logo exchange for money. But knowing that there could be a more valuable experience for the people at Blue Mountain, we pushed and started developing programs for them. So for Pepsi, we decided that at March break, it was one of our busiest times of the year. We wanted to really, you know, 
bring it to the forefront and we pre created the Pepsi March Break. So this was um, a lounge experience where people could go in and do arts and crafts and um, they could do it with their family members or whatever. So it was a non-endemic type of sponsorship where it wasn't really necessarily related to the brand, but Pepsi was able to provide a, a great family and art experience through what we developed for the customers at the resort. So that's an example of it's not just a logo on the hill, it, it actually was an experience that we created. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so in, ter in terms of um, the employee engagement, um, I know I've been to a couple um, conferences and symposiums in the past couple months and I know the financial institutions, um, they usually have a, a volunteerism um, model in their organizations. Um, so for instance, for TELUS, do you have something like that as well? Yes, so we have, uh, our, our, our staff have volunteered over 4 million hours since 2006. We have a huge program um, and it operates on so many levels. We have a TELUS Day of Giving where uh, all of our team members and any members of that are related to our team members can go and volunteer at a number of different organizations nationally. And we have matching programs where our employees can uh, do over 50 hours of work and they'll receive a grant from TELUS to go towards the organization of their choice. So there's a number, a lot of, a, a vast number of programs in TELUS that work towards creating volunteer hours like that. And I know that I really believe in this, and this is one of the things that I was going to touch on, I'll skip to it now, is it is important to understand how your partnership can um, not just engage the people that you are uh, working with, I'm just going to get you to pass this along, but to engage the entire organization. When you are able to engage a t an entire organization in what it is that your sponsorship is doing, you really you have a vast um, you have a, a vast loyalty program and it really motivates the organization to can stay with that partnership. So I think that, yeah, having employee engagement within an organization and as a partner to engage the organization's employees in what you're doing is, it's really key. So I'm going to move on now to my second point, and that's know your organizations, sorry, know the organization you are approaching like you know your own stakeholders. So it's really important to identify um, who your potential sponsors are to know if they're a good fit for you. It's important to know your own brand, to know that the brand that you're approaching will, will align well with your brand. Uh, you want to know who, your custom, who the customers of the sponsor you are approaching, and you want to know what those customers care about. Because if those customers care about arts and culture, so for example, Sun Life does a lot of sponsorship with arts and cultures, you know what type of customers they ha have, they probably do have customers that care about arts and culture. So if you know what who you, the target market is of your organization you're approaching and you know that they can relate well to what you're doing, you probably have a great opportunity to form a strong partnership there. Know the potential sponsors' values, pillars and platforms. Do they align with yours? So in doing um, a quick scan on the websites of many of the big sponsors and even some of the smaller sponsors in our communities, you can see that they they proudly put their pillars and platforms and their their values front and center. So I have a bo an example at the bottom here, it's PepsiCo. They have a, when you type in community investment Pepsi, they have a performance with purpose website. And at the top of the screen it says, uh, Performance with purpose means delivering sustainable growth by investing in a healthier future for people and our planet. On this website, at your fingertips, you will find everything you need to know in regards to their values, their philosophies around sustainability, how to apply, what type of grants they have, um, their foundation. It's a, an amazing toolkit. And when I look at some of their competitors and other corporations around, I see that they all have very similar, um, very comprehensive websites that give you a lot of great information. So don't be afraid to do your research. It will serve you well. 
um, <clears throat> know their current partners. So you don't necessarily want to go to uh, a partner if, you know, if you're competing with some of their existing partners or if you don't feel like the partners that they have might align with, with what your product or service or art is. Um, and then I gave the Sun Life example here that um, their pillars and platforms again are front and center when you look up their community investment. They have arts and culture as one of their pillars and you can click on it and see an entire list of all of the arts organizations that they sponsor nationally. So it's really great to do this research to, to know who, who you would be working with. My third one is demonstrate collaboration because we all want meaningful relationships. I think that relationships are one of the keys to having a successful partnership. I've experienced it personally where a relationship can make or break. And when it makes a relationship, it's, uh, when it makes a partnership, it's a wonderful thing. I've also seen multi-million dollar, multi-year sponsorships fall apart because there was a lack of collaboration. Um, Collaboration really is what creates the rich experiences and the opportunities that give value to the consumers and bring the positive association that sponsorship is all about. Good partnership management is key to many of, of the uh, sponsorships that I've worked in. I think that it is built through trust, good communication, understanding each other's strategies. Um, so on that note, it's really great to go into your partner and understand what your strategy is and understand how you can clearly convey that strategy to your partner so that they can work with you, share their strategy and you can build an alignment there. Corporations want meaningful relationships with their customers and you are the key to that. You hold the key to helping corporations build relationships in different capacities in new ways. And what I mean by this is if the RBC Bank is having a transactional relationship with their customers on a daily basis, it might be a great opportunity for RBC to formulate a relationship with yourself so that you can allow them to access some of your network in a way that they're not used to accessing. So know that you are bringing value to the table and um, that you can help them extend their relationships. One of the examples that I thought was, was good here is Starbucks. Starbucks is great at collaborating with their partners. Um, I feel like they're one of the best philanthropist and community investment examples that we have today. When you go to their, their website, you can see programs like Fostering Education in China, Rebuilding Gulf Cor Coast. These are national programs that run, but they also have incredible local community programs, um, such as their Global Month of Service, where, excuse me, where they'll work with different organizations, grassroots in the communities. So I feel like Starbucks does a really great job of collaborating with their partnerships on multi levels. Um, another another um, point that I wanted to make that is that it's it's important to learn how to collaborate in different capacities and maybe think outside of the box. So Home Depot has a grant system where they will grant um, individuals and organizations um, building funds. So you can build a, a building or a house or whatever it is that you want. It's a great idea to think not only about gaining sponsorship that is just in funding and in money, but in other ways that might be outside of the box as well. So if you, if you needed a building fund and so yeah, it's important to collaborate, not just on the level of trying to, again, have a transactional relationship, but to go beyond. Any questions? The value proposition. So I, I wanted to start this by asking, um, how many of you have done any return on investment calculators or worked, no? Okay, so maybe I'll, I probably will start this and I'll go straight to the beginning. So um, corporations have fewer and fewer dollars to allocate towards sponsorships. We're all getting squeezed, our budgets are all being cut and that's just the sad reality. Um, and it's tough because so is the, pri so is the uh, private sector also being cut in their budgets. So it is really important for you to be able to prove value. 
And the reason is, is that corporations want to understand and ensure that they're getting the most investment for themselves, but also for their partners. So measuring sponsorship or ROI is a science. And, um, but it's not a science that's hard to learn. It's quite easy. So I break it down into two factors. You have qualitative and quantitative, and everything can be measured. So for example, in quantitative, I measure impressions. I will measure impressions of advertising through mass advertising. I will measure impressions through interactions that my, that my um, sponsorships have with, um, with individuals in the community through activations and experiential marketing. I will measure how many pieces of swag we were able to get out. I will measure how much media we got. I'll draw all of those measurements together and I'll assign them each of them a different value. So for example, a billboard hit gets 0.002%. An interaction with a customer at one of my events gets $2. Giving a swag item get, gets $2.50. It's not, might not be exactly accurate, but you'll get the picture. So uh, after I've gathered all of the impression and then I've assigned a dollar value to them, I now calculate that up and I have my quantitative value for what that sponsorship is worth. Because quantitative value is in everything that's important, especially in arts and culture where so much of it is the rich experience, you need to assign qualitative value. And the way that I do this is I will, and, and it's very subjective, but I will, I will um, apply values to things like the, the brand. If the brand is a really good brand, so for example, if, if your theater company is something that's well known, like the Soul Pepper or the Tarragon, or, or I'll assign it a higher value. If it was a really unique experience that it provided, I'll assign it a higher value. And there's a number of different qualitative um, assignments that I will look at, and they'll be different for different partnerships. And with that, I'll again give it a dollar value assigned to it. So if you get eight out of nine on your brand, you'll get $90, $90 for example, or whatever it is. So I'll take the qualitative calculation and the quantitative calculation and I'll assign it a dollar value. My sponsorships can range from anywhere from $300,000 up to $2 million um, worth of um, giving a dollar value to it and that's not what we pay for it that's just the value that I assign to it after I've done this dirty work yes yes so I'll get I'll get to that right now actually there is an organization called IEG I've put the name here on the slide uh, this organization leads the way in sponsorship solutions they have more than 30 years of doing exactly what I've just described to you, qualitative and quantitative measurement of, of, um, of sponsorships. So I use some, most of their standard measurements, to be off, honest with you. I, I've stolen most of what they use because I feel like they're, you know, they're leaders in the market in terms of having a science behind measuring this. Um, their website, you'll be able to find it online with Google, IEG is, is the name of it. They're, they're one of the leaders in sponsorship. So I really rely on this organization to help me with the science. Um, I thought a great tip that I had heard recently uh, for arts and culture event that I was at was give your partners something that they can't buy. So for an example uh, that I've listed here is We Day. We Day was a really uh, valuable sponsorship for TELUS. We paid a lot for it because it really provided us with an opportunity to give something to the community that the community couldn't buy and that was participation in We Day. So it, it's a fantastic opportunity and through that um, we've been able to do some great things in the community. Is there any other questions about ROI? Yep. Oh. Are you, because obviously you see a lot of proposals coming in, are you seeing more, because um, I know traditionally a lot of people would say, uh, here are the things we can offer you you can have this many impressions, you can have uh, your product at our events or things like that. Are you seeing more people taking it the next step and what some of the things that I was seeing that were uh, was really clever is 
someone seeking sponsorship who went that step further and researched, say, your company and said, so these are the, your objectives that you're trying to achieve. And so they came up with examples where they actually maybe mocked up artwork or created a, you know, a, a story around a, an experience that they could have. Are you seeing more people taking it that extra step to make their proposal unique over others that have, you know, a shopping list of things that you yeah. could get? You see yeah, that no, more? that's a great point. People are coming to us now. Like I said, the transactional sponsorship is really something of the past, and people are coming with amazing opportunities for us. They're really getting to know who TELUS is and what we do before they approach us, and they're approaching us with social media campaigns, which I'll get to, and they're approaching us with exactly like like you've described in different capacities for for value that they can bring. And so the shopping list of sponsor benefits is it's still something that's important to us because some of those core benefits we need but um, it definitely is extending before, beyond those core benefits of, of impressions and tickets or whatever the tr traditional benefits are. Do you want to ask a question? Okay, so on to my last point. Take your sponsorship or proposal beyond the sponsorship. So that's exactly what I was just getting at. Cause marketing, CSR, sustainability, and branding. They're all so important to the sponsorship nowadays. It's not just about that transactional sponsorship again. Um, relationships need to be leveraged through multiple communication streams and media markets. So when you're building a proposal, you really need to think about how your artwork or your product or your service is going to get out to the marketplace? Is it going to be able to be viral through social media? Can you Pinterest it, tweet it, Facebook it? Um, and how is that going to look and what is that going to do? So for example, I, I put here, I love it when partners come forward with ideas for cause marketing. And I'm always happy to front resources to help them get their brand to my customers so that my customers develop a great brand association with me and my partners. Because really when you're able to just go beyond that sponsorship and you get into cause marketing and, and sustainability and branding, these things that create feelings and relationships, that's when you get that positive brand association which is so valuable. So for example, uh, last year we sponsored Luminato and one of the activations, the ex experiential marketing activations that we did was um, people could go up to this big giant U that we created and they could interact with the U, they could take their picture, upload it to Facebook. If people liked their picture or Luminato or Telus on their Facebook through the activation that we were doing, one dollar went to the donation of Art Heart. We had great leverage with this, it went viral. We had over 10,000 likes in a short amount of time and we were able to donate that money to Art Heart. So I really, um, I think that these ideas that can go viral are, are great because they, they really extend the brand into spaces you wanna be. Um, Another great example that speaks to all of the cause marketing, uh, sustainability and branding is Coca-Cola. For every one dollar that Coca-Cola invests in a sponsorship, they invest five in leveraging that sponsorship. So through, through mass marketing and cause marketing and branding, etc. Um, so for example, think about the World Wildlife Fund, how much money they spent to leverage that to leverage that um, campaign and it was a lot so it's important for for sponsors to be able to leverage it and you need to be able to think in your mind how is my sponsor going to to leverage what I'm doing um, sustainability is something that has been talked a lot for a long time um, when I went to Pepsi's website to look at them a great a vast majority of what they were talking about was sustainability. So it's important to have an understanding of what your pres what your position is on sustainability. Are you a sustainable company? Are you looking to partner with people who care about sustainability? And um, and is that something that you want to promote? Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. So if your organization uh, partners a lot. Um, on certain projects, is that something that, let's say, TELUS would be looking at as something positive? Like, 
instead of you um, sponsoring one organization, you're sponsoring, let's say, five or organization on one project. Is that something you would go for more than if it's just one organization applies, or it doesn't matter? Do, are you asking me, um, let me just try and dissect the question. So are you asking me if TELUS will sponsor nationally and um, in a large impact and yeah. in a small impact as well? Yes, but I think that's very different than, I think TELUS is different and um, in from a lot of our competitors. So for example, Bell, um, I'm sure you'll meet Brooke and she does uh, TIFF Lightbox and their main sponsor is Bell. So you'll know Bell for a few things, mental health and TIFF. And that really is where they put their focus. They invest $40 million a year into mental health in Canada. Um, and TELUS invests much more than that, but we, we invest it across the board. We are in everything from arts and culture, sports, health and wellness, uh, youth and technology. We're all across the board and we're everything from $10 million partnerships to, through our community boards, $10,000 sponsorships or less. So it's um it's a, it, again and it that's about it goes back to my first point of getting to really know who your partners are and what they sponsor to have an understanding of what your expectations should be for them so if you're not in mental health uh you might not want to appro approach bell if you are an art, arts organization you might want to approach somebody like a telus who has it as a pillar and platform or a, um, a Sun Life, or an RBC, TD, CIBC. These are all of the players that really operate in the arts and culture space. And there's also a lot of amazing grass or smaller community organizations. And you shouldn't be afraid to reach out to those organizations, even if they've never had a sponsor before. If you truly understand what their brand is, and if you truly understand who their customers are, don't be afraid to try and formulate a, a partnership with those smaller companies. Um, you, you can bring them opportunities and demonstrate value to them, and they might just take you up on it. I actually have a couple of questions, yes. so <laughs> um, they're just kind of building up as, as you were speaking. But my first question would be like, what is your sponsor cycle? Like, you know how some people like they have deadlines for for um, applications. So, what is yours for Telus typically? Uh, so that again is it's a tricky question because it there's varies, obviously with yeah, people. and with a tele with an organization like Telus, we're so vast that cycles are all over the place. So there is a cycle for the online application. I think it's once every other quarter. But again, if I was to approach a partner, I, I wouldn't rely on that cycle. I would go so far beyond that cycle. For me and my portfolio, I'm in sponsorships that la are lasting 20 years. Um, so I'll have expirations in 2014 and 2024. And um, so my cycle is much different than some of the other portfolio holders. Um, and then there, there's different cycles that are five years, four years, three years. So it's really hard to say. Okay. And then my next question would be, um, like when you do a sponsorship for, uh, is it all charity status? Or do you, like, do you have to hold charity status? Or can you hold a nonprofit status? Or Again, it's all over the map. This is just speaking from TELUS perspective. Um, we do have a team that holds a donation budget. So for example, my partnerships are sponsorships. And so I pay, pay out my budget from a budget that has nothing to do with donation. But if I would like to do a donation, I have to reach out to this uh, other business unit and beg for money from their pot to give a donation. Okay. okay. And then my final question is, um, do you do matching grants? Is that something that you do as well with Intellis? Yes, with different okay. programs. We have, again, it's all over the place. So with United Way, we have... Um, an internal matching system with some of our other sponsorships externally often when it's um it's when it's for relief programs we'll have matching as well so it just it varies okay perfect that answers everything i wanted to know that's great um can you tell me a little bit more about the community boards because i've heard about them before the tells community boards and how um they have their own specific set funds for 
their various communities and yes. I know that it's spread out throughout the different regions in Toronto yes. and the GTA. It's so, such an amazing yeah. story. I think I really admire the way that TELUS has handled its community board. So for those of you who haven't heard of it, there's 11 community boards across Canada. They're, um, they're these organizations that are run by TELUS, but the members of the boards are members of the community. So they're everybody from business figures to political heads to philanthropists in the community that really have an understanding of where the money should go that we are donating. So, or sponsoring rather. Um, so these community boards get together twice a, uh, twice a year. They're on average looking at over 500 applications and they're doing smaller sponsorships. So, so anything about, uh, I think it's a, I should know this guys, I'm sorry. I, it's, I don't, it's slipped in my memory, but I believe it's 20K to 90K. So they each have, I believe, a, about a million dollar budget that they can disperse throughout the year. But the key thing with these community boards is that the funding is really getting to the right places in a non-biased way from TELUS. So it's, it's our community getting together to get the money where it needs to go. I think it's an amazing program. Yeah. Um, so to get... To get um, a proposal into the, a community board, is it going through the sponsorships um, portal? Way, or is it going into a specific... Um, I, again, I'm sorry. Boards? I believe it is on our website. So what I'll do is my name is on the front of this uh, proposal proposal yeah, and I'll please find you after jo <laughs> join me on LinkedIn okay. and I will send you the link online to where you can find that okay thank you yeah and for all of you please join me on LinkedIn I'd be happy to continue this dialogue with you um, this is somewhat specific yes this hall over here uh, they have they've been given naming uh, they've been given a naming opportunity okay if you were given that opportunity, how would you value it? The, like the this building naming, that we're in right now? Yes, this hall over here is the Ada Slate Hall. Oh. So a Ada Slate is very involved in I see donating yes, to, the, um, um, to, to the arts and all the rest of that. Yes. So if it was the Tillis Hall, how would you value, value that? that? So I would look at that in exactly like I had described to you, quantitatively and qualitatively. So how many people are going to walk through that year? I would assign, excuse me, how many people are going to walk through that hall in a year? I would assign it a value. Um, what PR is it going to get me to put my name on that? I would assign it a value. How am I going to leverage it? How am I going to talk about it in the community? I'd assign that a value. And then quantitatively, how will it affect this organization. If it will have a really strong impact for my dollars to be here, I would assign it a higher value. So I'd go through that process of, you know, counting all of the impressions and all of the qualitative aspects of it and I'd sign it a dollar value and see if it was worth it. Um, you spoke to uh, giving them, giving people what they can't buy. Um, I was hoping you could give one more example of um, given a uh, sponsor uh, something that they can't buy in participating in a festival or a or a community event how would how would they um, how would they receive something that they felt they couldn't you know purchase from mm -hmm. Uh, like a, a, a store or like yeah. you know, well known. With arts and culture it's so easy because so much ar arts and culture is an experience. Um, it's not a, a tangible product, it's something really that you experience, which is why I think it's, it's so great to sponsor arts and culture. So for example, um, if we wanted to, I'm trying to think, there's so many different ways that we've, you know, we've purchased um, performances and um, been able to donate them to the community, so something that maybe the community couldn't afford. Um, or if there's a special piece of art, it's a one of a kind, uh, I know TELUS has purchased art because um, it's something special and yeah, so different examples. I haven't seen this very much in, in Canada, I've seen it uh, more in the States and even in Europe, but um, what are your thoughts on 
sponsorships for individuals. So not organizations, but more if I'm an artist. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's, if you have a brand that is valuable and you have something to offer, you should go forth and seek sponsorship. Um, and if there's the right alignment with a partner, then that's wonderful. I mean, I'm sure there's incidents at TELUS, I can't think of any off the top of my head, or other organizations that I've worked with where, spon where individuals have been sponsored. Okay, thank you. Anything else? And I think we're, we're, all, we're all done of okay. no time, but... I brought some TELUS critters for everybody, so I'll just I'll pass them around. If you have kids, you'll love them. <laughs>